I'm not too familiar with who Liz Truss is. I do know that she was recently appointed Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, so we're gonna be checking out 10 times Liz Truss pissed off everyone. Apparently, she's not too popular right now. Let's get into the video, shall we? Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Liz Truss pissed off everyone. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the most damning moments from the career of the UK's shortest serving Prime Minister in history. She's not even Prime Minister anymore. Oh my gosh. Dude, she was just appointed Prime Minister. She's already got <laughs> good God. Okay, all right, let's do it. Let us know in the comments how long you thought she'd last. Number 10, the infamous Conservative Conference. 2014 was the year of Truss's infamous speech at the Conservative Party Conference that has haunted her throughout her career. It was filled with bizarre facial expressions, drawn out dramatic pauses, reluctant and confused applause, and strange statements from the then Secretary of State for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. One highlight includes mentioning that the UK produces more cheese than France, then stating we import two-thirds of our cheese and theatrically calling this a disgrace. Later, Trust what? cheerfully tells the audience she'll soon be in Beijing to open up new pork markets. Then, while smiling broadly, what? she waits for the scattered clapping. The whole speech was a weird mess that baffled people. Number What? So why was she talking about cheese and pork? And okay, so she was Secretary of State before she was Prime Minister. Okay, I got that. Alright. Scattered clapping. The whole speech was a weird mess that baffled people. <laughs> Number nine, the affair. Apparently, Ooh. to be Prime Minister of the UK at the moment, you need to have a turbulent personal life filled with <laughs> romance and scandal. And Truss certainly fits the mold. Oh, so Miss Truss was getting it in, huh? Let's see what she did. She married her husband, Hugh O'Leary, in 2000. Yet, only four years later, Truss began an affair with then Tory MP Mark Field, who was appointed Ooh. her political mentor. You might remember Mark Field's a homewrecker. Who's this Mark Field? Four years into the marriage. Woo! Then Tory MP Mark Field, who was appointed her political mentor. You might remember <laughs> Field as the politician who was I bet he was her mentor. Who was appointed her political mentor. You might remember Field as the politician who was suspended for aggressively handling a Greenpeace activist in 2019. After around 18 months together, <laughs> their affair ended. Whilst oh. Truss's relationship with O'Leary survived, Field's marriage to Michelle Acton didn't, and the two divorced. In 2009, some members of the Southwest Norfolk Conservative Group attempted to deselect Truss due to the affair. Number 8. Attacking France Liz Truss found herself heavily criticised after her response at a Conservative leadership hustings. When asked if French President Emmanuel Macron was a friend or foe, she replied that the jury was still out. Which is pretty insulting to one of the UK's allies. Ooh. Macron responded, They're allies of the UK, and she said the jury's still out about their relationship. God knows. She had to have done a lot of good, apparently, because how else would she have been appointed Prime Minister? Oh, wow. And we're only on number like two or three by affirming that the UK is an ally despite its leader. Yikes. Truss has a history of mucking up relationships with other countries. As Foreign Secretary, when negotiating Brexit with the EU, she commented about offering support to Baltic allies across the Black Sea, even though the Black Sea is 700 miles away. Then, after speaking to Russia about Ukraine, Russia's Foreign Minister described the conversation with Truss as the deaf talking to the blind. Number seven, not great. Damn! The deaf talking to God knows. Dude, how is she appointed prime minister? Without, that's only number that we're on, oh my God. It with geography. When leading the UK, the prime minister should be pretty knowledgeable about its geography. After all, it would be pretty embarrassing for the PM to state the wrong location in a public forum, right? Yeah. Mm. 
During the Conservative Party hustings in 2022, Truss talked about energy measures she would prioritise. She then mentioned the nuclear reactors that are produced where they are in Derbyshire. The only problem, the event was taking place in Cheltenham, Gloucestershire, around 100 miles away. Oops. But it shouldn't be too surprising, as Truss has a history of not knowing her surroundings. After announcing her intention to run for leadership, she tried to leave the room. Instead, she got lost in the crowd and needed assistance. <laughs> Number 6. Flip-flop Brexit Brexit oh. is a touchy subject for many. It's all Time out. I hope it's not insulting to declare to you guys that I am, in fact, ignorant to the facts of Brexit. So if anyone could summarize that really quickly down in the comment... Co Take two and action. If any one of you guys could summarize the facts of Brexit in the comments, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks. Six, flip-flop Brexit. Brexit is a touchy subject for many. It's also a subject that can cause many arguments around the table at family gatherings when leavers and remainers clash. Before the 2016 referendum, Truss was an ardent EU fan. She stated we would be better off staying in the Union and didn't want a barrier of entry for her daughters to work or live in Europe. But jumping forward a year to 2017, Truss changed her mind completely. She claimed she would vote to leave if the referendum happened today, as the economic problems of the exodus had, apparently, not come to light in her view. This flip-flopping not long after the result has made Truss look disingenuous to many. Number 5. F if you can, briefly in the comments, explain what the big deal was with that. As I said, I'm not even sure what Brexit is. Again, help me out in the comments, guys. I appreciate it. Fracking. <clears throat> Though when she served as Environment Secretary, she began by claiming to care deeply about climate change, she later began a tradition of consistently voting against green policies, not to mention taking a private jet on an extremely long flight to visit Australia. But when she ascended to the top office, one of her flagship policies was to lift the ban on fracking. This was despite opposition from Tory MPs and despite fracking to lift the ban on fracking? Having next to no support from the British public, with fracking operations rarely happening because of so much local outrage. And then she decided she was going to try and stop farmers from building solar panel arrays on their own land, while also saying she wanted farmers to have more freedom. Number four, the nuclear what? option. Oh boy. In a world where leaders have access to weapons of mass destruction, we all hope they'll show restraint when that possibility of unleashing Armageddon comes up. But not trust. Appearing at a Conservative Hustings event in Birmingham in August 2022, the host John Pienaar asked her how she would feel if she had to launch nuclear weapons, even if it meant global annihilation. Lacking any emotion whatsoever, Truss declared it's an important duty of the Prime Minister and she's ready to do that. When Pina asked... Uh. Whoa. ...asked again how she would feel, Truss just repeated that she was prepared to press the button. This blasé attitude towards possibly destroying the world certainly raises many red flags. Number three, the Queen. This is BBC News from London. Uh -oh. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We know that Liz Truss didn't have anything to do with the Queen's passing. She was 96 years old after all, but it was still shocking to have the country's longest reigning sovereign pass away after just two days from Liz Truss taking office. What followed was a 10-day period of mandatory national mourning in which the government totally shut down, save for trying to rush out Truss's energy price guarantee policy. She was also a bit of a damp squib at the funeral itself. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. As the Prime Minister, she was required to make a speech, but her speech was so poorly delivered and ended up not making an awful lot of sense. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Number two, the mini budget. What was the deal with that, guys? I probably shouldn't have watched this video until I was a little more knowledgeable in the political process and everything of the UK, but 
uh, maybe it's a good thing because I can get a crash course in the way you guys do things, hopefully by your comments down below. And receive you unto myself. Number two, the mini budget. Is this the single most disastrous, most damaging economic policy in British history? It might be, as it saw mortgage rates quadruple, pensions get threatened, and the pounds sink to its lowest level against the dollar of all time. People are really well. worried. What is happening is frightening for many people. Whether they hold mortgages, whether they're savers, whether they've yeah. got a, a, a pension. Nearly every economist in the country and most bankers in the city warned against this, but Truss and Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng ignored them. Truss then disappeared. Kwasi Kwarteng? That's his name, Quasi Quateng. Wow. Since this, but Truss and Chancellor Quasi Quateng ignored them. Truss then disappeared from public view for days until returning for a series of shockingly bad local radio interviews in which she was asked how could she sleep at night. Carrie in Birchington says, what on earth were you thinking? The country was already in a state of recession. And another says, how can we ever trust the Conservatives with our economy again? Finally, Trust decided to scapegoat Kwa Tang and gave him the sack. Though it was initially claimed that the budget was devised by both of them. I and the Chancellor have taken decisive action to deal with that. Number one, shortest PM in history. <laughs> I came into office at a time of great economic and international instability. The mini-budget led to resignations, sackings and the installation of Jeremy Hunt as the new Chancellor of the Exchequer. Though Hunt's role was to steady the ship, the ship certainly was not steadied. I recognise, though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. The day after Truss's disastrous PMQ's appearance on October 19th, in which she publicly went against policy Hunt had only announced at the beginning of the week, she appeared outside number 10 to announce she'd be resigning after just 45 days. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King 45. to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. But far from the Tories anointing a chosen and tested successor, another leadership election was launched, though this one was set to only last for a week rather than two months, after allegations that her cabinet ministers were bullying MPs. Do you agree with our pigs? All right, guys, that was a lot to take in, so I hope I get a lot of help from you guys in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.